Hey everyone, so yesterday I was tracking my biggest print on demand store sales throughout the day and by the end of the day I'd sold around $3,700 worth of merch and so I was curious. I wanted to know how much of that was just in t-shirt sales alone. And so I checked it out and I discovered that about 57% of my sales were just in t-shirts. So of course that's around $2,100. And so this just confirms something that I've talked about on this channel before, and that is that t-shirts are easily my top selling print on demand item. Plus, this is a bit more subjective, but I personally think that they're really fun to design and sell as well. And so this inspired me to create an in-depth tutorial video showing the tips and the tricks and the processes that I use to design top selling t-shirts in Canva. Although I'm sure some of you watching are probably thinking, well, gee, Sarah, haven't you shown how to use Canva to design t-shirts before? And the answer is that I have, kind of. <laughs> you see, as a YouTuber, you'll inevitably get tons of comments from people leaving their opinions on your videos. And one of the most consistent comments that I've gotten in the past is that my videos are too long. And so usually in past tutorials where I'm using Canva to create t-shirt designs, I've sped up the clips or cut stuff out and I haven't explained which buttons I'm pressing and why. Which of course inevitably ends up disappointing the people that did want the longer tutorial video. And so this is the tutorial for those of you out there that didn't want me to skip over anything. Plus I'm also gonna share some extra tips and tricks which I haven't seen anybody else talk about on YouTube. Yay. But of course, to show you how to design a top selling design in Canva, we need to find a top selling design to create first. And so what I did for this video was I went over to Redbubble and I went through the men's t-shirts and I sorted them by best selling and I looked over the top 100 best selling designs and I picked a fun one for us to make our own version of. It's called Not Fast, Not Furious. It's super cute. And so I thought we'd make our own version of this t-shirt for this tutorial video, but instead of making it sloth themed, we're gonna make it snail themed. All right, so now that we know what t-shirt we're gonna recreate, let's go ahead and open up Canva and get started. So step one, we need to prepare our design canvas. All right, so to get started, just jump on over to Canva. If you've already got an account already, that's great. And you can just go ahead and log in. But if you don't have an account, then you will need to go and create one. When you create a Canva account, you'll see that there are two options. You can either get a free account or you can get a pro account that costs 13 US dollars a month. But here's the thing. I strongly, strongly recommend that you get a pro account, not a free account, because the pro accounts have lots of elements and features that are gonna make it way easier and better for designing t-shirts. But of course, Canva does have a very generous 30-day free trial to their pro account. So if you'd like to get a free pro account for Canva, you can just go ahead and click on my link in the video description below. But yes, once you're logged in, you can get started. So just go ahead and click on the create design button and then click on the custom size button. And now you can enter in the measurements of your t-shirt printing area. And I probably should explain what that is. So the t-shirt printing area is the area of the t-shirt that your t-shirt printing company can print your design onto. Different print shops and different print on demand apps do have their own different printing area size. So you'll want to go to your chosen one and find out what size their printing area is. For most print on demand websites and apps, you'll find that information either on the product page information tab or inside of the FAQ. Each one is of course different, but here are some of the most commonly used ones relevant to my subscribers. So for Printful, their unisex Bella Canvas 3001 t-shirt has a printing area size of 12 inches by 16 inches. And what's digital over on Printify, which is my favorite print on demand provider on Printify for t-shirts has a printing area for their unisex Bella Canvas 3001 t-shirts of 4,500 pixels by 5,100 pixels and over on Redbubble for their standard unisex t-shirts, their printing area is 12 inches by 16 inches. And so as you can see, different print on demand websites and apps are gonna give you their different measurements in different ways. For some it's in pixels, for some it's in inches. And so luckily within Canva, when you're adding in your custom size, you can select it to be either from pixels, millimeters, centimeters, or in inches. And so then once you've created your canvas, you want to go in and change the background color for it. So just click on the blank canvas and then a little color box will show up. 
you then click that and then you click the background color that you want. Now for this, you want to select a background color that matches with your primary t-shirt color that you want to design for. And so for most people, as I've said before on this channel, you probably want to primarily sell onto black t-shirts. And so you wanna select a black background color. And that's because, as I've talked about on this channel, in the t-shirt industry, black t-shirts are easily the most popular color with customers. I know that for me, my sales, more than 50% of them are for black t-shirts. So much so that if I create a design that doesn't print well onto a black t-shirt, and so I release it not on black, <laughs> I'll inevitably get an email from a customer being like, love the design, but when are you going to release the black t-shirt version? <laughs> And so, unless you have a really good reason to not select black as your primary t-shirt color, I highly recommend that you create your design optimized for a black t-shirt. So, step two, add and edit free pictures and graphics. So Canva has a ton of different free pictures and graphics inside of its app. Just click on the elements button in the left side menu, and then you can do a search for whatever graphic you want. You can filter the results to show you photos or graphics, but most t-shirts are going to be using graphics and not photos. Canva also has animated graphics and standard graphics, but obviously you can't exactly print an animated graphic onto a t-shirt. So something else that you can also do is you can filter the results so that you only see static graphics. And something that's also important to note is that one of the perks of having a pro account instead of a free account is that pro accounts get access to more graphics. There are some graphics in the app that are available for both free and pro members, and then there are graphics that are pro account only. If it's a pro account only graphic, you'll be able to tell because it will have the pro crown graphic next to it. All the other images that don't have this icon are free graphics that are available for free accounts. And something else that I haven't seen anybody really talk about on YouTube is that if you find a picture or a graphic that you like by a creator, then you can find out more information about that picture. Just hover your mouse over the graphic that you like and you'll see a little three dot button icon. Well, you can click that button to get more information about the image and the creator. And you can even click on the creator's name to find more pictures and graphics inside of Canva that they created. Free pictures have generally been sourced by Canva from public domain websites, but the pro images have not. So I personally reached out to the Canva Pro licensing team to confirm that you can use their pro elements for commercial purposes. And in their email to me, they confirmed that the photos, the graphics, the illustrations, the stickers, the fonts, and the videos that are included in the app for pro users are allowed to be used for commercial purposes, including being printed onto t-shirts. The one exception that they shared with me is that you need to combine different elements together. You can't just sell one element by itself. So for example, if I came to Canva and I found a cute picture of a rainbow and then I went and posted it onto a t-shirt and tried to sell it, that would be illegal. But if I went ahead and added some text to that cute rainbow picture and then printed that onto a t-shirt and sold it, that would be legal. And the reason for that, of course, is because I combined multiple elements together. I combined a picture with text. And so if you want to use pro elements, make sure that you use at least two together, that you combine pictures or pictures with text or things like that. But yes, back to my actual t-shirt example here. Now, as I said, I'm gonna be taking a popular design, adding my own twist onto it to turn it into something new. And this is actually a method that I talk about in my free print on demand ebook, where I share how I and others earn passive income every day with print on demand. And if you'd like to get a free copy of my ebook, you'll find a link to download it in the video description. But yes, back to my t-shirt design. So as I said earlier, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this sloth niche t-shirt and instead I'm gonna twist it and turn it into a different niche, this time around the snail niche. So I just clicked on elements and then did a search for snail pictures and then again, I filtered the results to show graphics and to only show static graphics. And as I browsed through, unsurprisingly, there were tons of snail pictures to pick from, especially because I was working with a pro account, not a free account. And I actually ended up choosing a pro image. And there's also something cool about this graphic that I need to mention. This is an example of an image where you can change the colors of it. 
And so how do you do that? Well, what you just do is you click on an image and if you can edit the colors, the color boxes for it will show up in the top left corner of the app. So I could go ahead and turn the snail into a pink snail if I wanted. <laughs> And this can actually be really handy when you're creating t-shirt designs. So you think about it, right? You might be scrolling through the app and you see a black image, but you're designing for a black t-shirt, so you don't want to print black onto black. Well, you should still check out the image anyway, because you might be able to edit the colors for it and turn it into a white image. However, this does not work for all of the graphics inside of Canva. So for example, if I go ahead and click on this snail image here, well, the color boxes for it don't show up because it's not an editable image. And here's the thing, right? If you're a beginner and you want to make sure that you're picking graphics which are gonna print nicely onto t-shirts, then I strongly, strongly recommend that you stick to images that you can edit the colors for. And the reason for that is because those images are what you call SVG graphics. In other words, they are scalable vector graphics, which is exactly the reason why you're able to edit the colors in the first place. Unlike traditional images, which are created by essentially filling in lots of little dots with colors to create an image when they're all put together, SVG images are created with mathematical formulas and mathematical formulas can change and scale. So for example, let's take a photo of my dog Starbuck. Well, when I take that photo, the way that it's created is that it's essentially just filling in lots of little dots with colors. Well, if I were to take that photo and then blow it up onto a ginormous billboard, chances are it would probably look pretty pixelated. And why is that? Well, it's because that billboard was way bigger than my original photo was. And so that billboard has way more dots on it than my photo did. And so to be able to fill all those dots, I've had to stretch out my photo across it. And now it looks terrible. <laughs> Whereas if I took that snail image and I blew it up and printed it onto a billboard, it would look great. <laughs> And that's because it's an SVG. As I increase the size of my snail picture, the mathematical formula just change and it scales up as I change the snail size. And I've just got to clarify something. It doesn't mean that you can't print non-SVG files onto t-shirts. If those pictures and graphics that weren't SVGs were uploaded in really high quality to start with, then they can still look great. However, the truth is, is that while you can find out that information on what quality a picture was uploaded in, Canva doesn't make it easy. And so for beginners, the easiest thing to do is just to stick with scalable graphics. Anyway, jargon over, back to my tutorial video. And so after finding my cute little snail dude, I thought he looked a little bit lonely, so I decided to find him a cute grassy background. And so I went ahead and found one that I liked. And of course, I made sure to click on the graphic to see that I could edit the colors, which meant that it was an SVG graphic. Now, you also may have noticed something funny when I added the grass graphic to the canvas. Even though it's supposed to be a background image, it ended up going on top of the snail, which <laughs> was not my intention. Luckily though, that's very easy to fix. I just went ahead and clicked on the graphic and then clicked the position button and then clicked the backwards button to move it behind my snail. And with that, I went ahead and I added my graphics. Yay! Next up, it's time for step three. Add text and add text effects. So Canva has a huge range of fonts included in its database, so many that it can almost be a bit overwhelming for new t-shirt designers. So a beginner friendly way to sort through them all is to click on the text button and then click on the add a title button and then go ahead and open up the font drop down menu and type in the type of font that you're looking for. So for example, if you wanted retro fonts, you could type in retro and then it'll show you all of the different retro themed fonts included in the Canva database. Just like pictures, Canva also has some fonts included in its database that are only for pro members. And so if you have a pro account, you will have more fonts to choose from. And also just to clarify again, when I reached out to the Canva licensing team, the email that they sent back to me said that pro fonts are allowed to be used for commercial purposes. Yay. So what I recommend that you do as a new designer is that you just spend some time clicking through and experimenting with different fonts and you don't rush it. I went ahead and experimented and picked one that I already admittedly like, Bobby Jones Soft. So time to actually add in my slogan. Well, if you remember, my slogan was split into two different lines. The top line was not fast and then the bottom line was not furious. 
So to create continuity between my two lines of text and ensure the fonts and stuff remain the same, what I did was I created my first line of text, not fast, and then I right clicked it, copied it, and then pasted in a new copy, and of course changed the text to be not furious, and then I dragged that second line of text to be below the picture and made sure my first line of text was above the picture. And if you want to resize your text boxes like I did, you've got two ways you can do it. One is you can just drag your text box out or in to increase the size or decrease the size. Or of course, you can just type your uh, font size number into the font size box. Canva also has some built-in rulers that you might have noticed I've been using throughout this tutorial. They're showing up because you can see that there's a big line there which shows me if my elements are centered and there are also rulers on the side of the canvas so that you can ensure that things are spaced out as you want them to be. And so once I'd gone ahead and added my text, it was time to add a cool effect to it. To add in text effects, it's really simple. You just click on the text box that you want to edit and then you click the effects button. And now you can choose from Canva's very wide range of effects. And when you click on an effect, you'll see that there are different sliders that you can use to either make the effect stronger or perhaps like change the direction of the effect. Something that I should note is that some of the effects use transparency and transparency does not print well. So I recommend that you don't use any uh, transparent effects in a design that you're printing onto a t-shirt. But while Canva does have a bunch of cool different text effects, probably the one that t-shirt designers are going to use the most is the ability to make your text rounded. And so to do that, you just go ahead and click on the shape button and then you use the sliders or you type in the angle that you want your text to be. This was not in Canva for a long time and it was highly requested and so it's a pretty recent feature that Canva added in. So for the first line, I wanted it to curve upwards like a rainbow. So I set it to be curved at a 45 degree angle. And then for the bottom line of text, I wanted it curved in the opposite direction. So I set it to be a minus 45 degree angle. Admittedly though, the design looked a little bit unbalanced and that's because the phrase not fast is a lot shorter than not furious. And so it looked a bit weird how the different lines were not the same length. So a good way to help balance this if you're designing t-shirts is to click on the phrase that is shorter and then click on the spacing button and then change the spacing between the letters so that it's spaced out a little bit more so that you can extend the length of that shorter line. And it's actually something that that top selling Redbubble design did. If you take a look at it, you'll see that the spacing between the letters on the top line is slightly stretched out more compared to the bottom line to help balance it out. And the reason why I did this because I've tested this a lot and I have found that t-shirt designs that fill as much of the printing space as possible and are as big as possible convert more and sell more. And so unless I've got a very good stylistic reason why I want my design to be smaller, I try to make it fill as much the printing area as possible. And so now my design was ready to be converted into a print ready file. Yay. All right, so I'm sorry for the jargon for a moment, but here is the deal, right? Most print on demand providers are going to ask for an sRGB PNG image file that is at least 150 DPI, but ideally as close to 300 DPI as possible. Which means then that instead of saving our file as a scalable SVG graphic, we're unfortunately gonna have to save it as a PNG file, which is luckily very easy to do within Canva. Although the thing about Canva is that it saves PNG files in low resolution, not high resolution. So we're gonna have to tweak our save settings a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click share and then we're gonna click download and then we're gonna tick the box to make our background transparent. And this is important because if we didn't tick that little box to make our background transparent, the big black box behind our design would print onto the t-shirt. But by clicking the button to make our background transparent, it's now going to print without that black box. Yay, this is also a pro account only feature, which is another reason why I suggest that you get a pro account. In addition to that, we're also going to increase the image size by three by just sliding the image size slider button all the way to the right. Now, this is going to make a very large file, so it may take a little while to save, so just please be patient. <laughs> 
And the reason why we're gonna do this is because I'm not gonna explain it in depth because it's all jargony and boring, but basically by giving our print provider a much larger file than the printing size, they're gonna reduce that file down to the printing size, which is gonna effectively increase our dots per inch. <laughs> And so now, as you can see, when I went ahead and uploaded my design to Printful, the DPI was over 300. Yay. Did my video help you? If it did, please subscribe for more videos about earning money online with print on demand and click the little notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my uploads.